TrueNorth.bet is built from the ground up to be the credible, dependable, and safe gaming experience with the best customer service in the market. TrueNorth.bet focuses exclusively on Canada and Canadian players from coast to coast. And TrueNorth.bet has an incredible offer for you. They will match your first deposit up to $500 in bonus funds. All you have to do is visit TrueNorth.bet slash SDPN and register to get this incredible offer. Again, that's $500 in bonus funds with your first deposit. TrueNorth.bet slash SDPN. Let's start with the Vegas Golden Knights. By the skin of their teeth, getting a win over the Washington Capitals on, on Wednesday night. It happens to coincide with uh, one Alexander Ovechkin also scoring his 50th of the season. He now has tied Mike Bossy and Wayne Gretzky for most 50 goal seasons at nine, which, I mean, yes, that's a pretty significant point of NHL history there. But I want to focus a little bit more on Vegas first before we talk a little bit more about Alexander Ovechkin. Uh, they're a team that is obviously fighting for its playoff lives. And they've made a lot of moves to put themselves in a position where they should be a playoff team. But injuries have obviously struck them in different ways. And they're in the position that they're in right now. I'm just curious from your vantage point, Siege, with the Golden Knights, if they miss the playoffs, how do you how would you rate and, and grade their season? Do you see it as a failure? Do you take the injuries for what they are? How do you see it? Well, you can't look past the injuries, honestly. And you know, I know it's, it's a lame excuse and every team has to deal with injuries and lots of teams that are going to make the playoffs uh, have had some significant players miss time with injury. But, you know, for Vegas, it, it, it's been all year long. You know, I remember at the beginning of the year in November, I think they came through Toronto. They had like seven or eight guys out of that game. You know, obviously they make the Eichel trade soon after that, but he can't play for a while. They, they lose Mark Stone, Alec Martinez, Riley Smith, their backup goaltender, Laurent Boissois, down and down and down the list. Max Pacioretty missed time. I mean, it, it's impossible to look at their season and not point out that fact, you know, that, that most of their best players have just missed time at some point during this year, and that's contributed to where they're at. But, you know, it's still a, a small F failure, I guess. You know, I'm not going to come down too hard on them. You know, there was a year that the Tampa Bay Lightning missed the playoffs in, in the midst of this tremendous run they've been on. And if you look back, it was mostly just injuries. They didn't have to reinvent the wheel, and they, you know, went on and became a team that won the Stanley Cup. You know, I, I think Vegas will be a good team next year, um, no matter no matter what happens in these last few games. You know, they're still facing a huge uphill climb to the playoffs. I, you know, I frankly don't expect them to be able to get in. Um, you know, with L.A. getting a, a big win this week, Vancouver's come on, you know, Dallas is there. I mean, it's just it's a lot of teams for them to leapfrog and not a lot of runway to get it done. But, you know, I think they're, they're going to be facing an offseason with changes. But I don't I don't sure you should be reacting to what happened this season when you're informing those changes. That Tampa Bay Lightning season you're referring to is probably the 2016-2017 season where they had all those injuries and they had to call up a whole bunch of guys from the HL to try to fill in the gaps. And they very nearly made a chart and almost made the playoffs. They made a charge near the end of the year and they almost made it. They traded veterans at the deadline too. They traded Brian Boyle to Toronto. Valtteri Filippo, I believe, got traded to that deadline. Like they, they, they basically, I give them credit. Like this is where I think Steve Eisenman – has excelled as a general manager. And, and obviously the Detroit story is a little different one. He's, you know, I just saw he passed three years there now, but it's a rebuild, but, you know, sort of awareness of where you're at. They, they use that, that blip as an unfortunate year, difficult season for the franchise, but they got some assets. As you say, they nearly I think Ben Bishop might've got traded that, that season as well. Uh, and then they reloaded and look what they've done since. So it's, you know, not every year is going to go your way. I think it's, it's one thing that in hockey, we still come to terms with, I think when we look at teams is that there is still some sort of luck involved. And, and obviously what you're doing is trying to control your own luck as much as you can, but you know, things like injuries, sometimes it's not because you have a poor program or bad, you know, medical health team. I mean, sometimes, sometimes shit happens, man. Like it's, it's just a fact. I think this is a shit happened season for Vegas. A lot of shit happened. What good for them, you know, in, in their previous four years. Right. I mean, they, they've, you know, had a start to their their franchise unlike anything we could have ever imagined, unlike anything we've ever seen in NHL history. So, you know, perhaps there was some good fortune. They had a good run at the slot machine there for a few years, and they're, they're on a bad beat uh, this season. So what does that say for a guy like Jack Eichel, who went through all those years in Buffalo of not making the playoffs, and then he ends up on a team where there's a chance they missed the playoffs here too? What does that say about his luck? 
it's not good, but I, I think that if you're Jack Eichel, you're just excited to be back, to be playing. You know, he's going to be so much better next season. I, I just believe that having got back and played these games and, and getting familiar in a new environment, then he gets an entire summer. There's nothing hanging over his head. Uh, you know, knock wood, let's hope he's still in good health, but, but that he can just train and know he's going to be a gold knight for the foreseeable future. And, and you know, I think there's still a lot to be excited about that organization. So, um, you know, it's not a, can't be a great feeling. And I saw that graphic bouncing around from the 2015 draft, you know, number of playoff games played and, you know, Connor McDavid and, and Jack Eichel is still at zero, but you know, the one and two from that draft are pretty far down the list. Um, but, you know, I, I think you'll be playing playoff games. It's just probably going to be in 2023 rather than 2022. Yeah. Seeing Jack Eichel at zero at that list. I think that's what you, I think you were trying to say the Connor McDavid's on that list and Jack Eichel's still at zero. Like that's. It, they're it, they're it, both it, down the list though, right? I think they're both down, yes. might've been at the top if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. I mean, this is the thing with the lottery and they've at least changed the lottery now where the number one pick could go to a team that isn't that far away. But when the odds were the way they were back in 2015, basically the last place teams were picking one and two. And so if you're joining a last place team is even if you're Connor McDavid and you win all these scoring titles or you're Jack Eichel, like it's a lot more needs to happen for those organizations to get back to being, you know, great teams. Um, And so it makes sense. Someone that gets picked in the second round like Sorelli would be at the top because he joined a really good team. I'll mention this with Vegas. So they get the OT win over Washington. They have the Sharks on Sunday. These guys don't play until Sunday now. And then the Dallas starts next Tuesday, next Wednesday, Chicago. And then they end their season against the St. Louis Blues next Friday night. So a lot of sitting and anxious waiting around until they could play again on Sunday against San Jose. And right now they're out of a playoff spot right now, still trailing uh, for a spot in the wild card or in the Pacific and the Vancouver Canucks who they lost in overtime to the Ottawa senators. And they pretty much need to play perfect down the stretch, but they still have a faint chance of making the playoffs themselves. What do you think of the Vancouver Canucks at this point? Well, tip your hat to them. I mean, they've been on a crazy heater here the last little bit. And really, if you go back to when Bruce Boudreaux was hired in December to replace Travis green, they're a top 10 team in the league by record in points gained. So, you know, considering where he took over that team, I remember, Julian, our, our first whack of episodes at the start of this season was all like, what's going on in Vancouver? You know, this team should be better and, and it really should have been better. And what's been proven is, you know, they made a change uh, and, you know, they, they've with, you know, without really rehaul, overhauling the, the roster, they've, they've gotten a lot better results. I think time's going to run out on them too. But I guess if you're a Canuck right now or remember the Golden Knights, you're thinking we have to we have to run the table. We have to win out from here. I think they both can get to 97 points by by winning out. You know that has been in the past a number of points that's that's got a team into the playoffs, but it's a right over on, on the do or don't mark. If you even surrender a point or two and you can only get to 95 or 96, 94, I mean I just don't see those totals getting you a wild card spot in the Western Conference. So I, I think the focus has to be winning the rest of the games. And then hoping that the, the results in the other cities help you out. And that's not, and, and for them to do that, you have to talk about a game against the Minnesota wild that, so that'll come out tonight. Uh, and then on Saturday, they have the Calgary flames. So you have to go through two cup contending teams in your attempt to run the table. And then you have the Seattle Kraken on the Tuesday. And then on Thursday, if the Canucks find themselves in a position where they run the table uh, I've seen people describe it as a potential game of the year candidate against the Los Angeles Kings on a- on April 28th to end off their season. Like there's a part of me, I said earlier on another podcast, like I really want the Vancouver Canucks to put themselves in position, do it. I love these playoff races, especially when they get down to the wire, but it's just that th- those Minnesota and Calgary flames, both those games on the road too. That is what scares me the most with the Vancouver Canucks admittedly. But if they find a way to clear those hurdles and give themselves a chance, all bets are off. <laughs> 